Thank you so much, uh, Sabine. <clears throat> so uh, let me talk a bit more about, about the Institute itself and about its founding. Um, the founding of this Institute, which is one of the first of its kind in the world, actually. Uh, I know Oxford is, of course, ahead of us, but you're talking about ethics in, 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 on the internet in the broad sense. So we are focusing on AI and the new world. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, um, it was a process that only could be brought into existence by the efforts of many. Already when we first saw the need for such an institute, it was clear that this could only be brought into life through a collaborative effort. Because we had to develop an entirely new institute from the announcement at the DLD conference in January to the insul installation of the first research groups, which I will present shortly, um, and we could only do this by the help of many members of, of TUM who have been enormously helpful and supportive, in particular our President Hofmann. Thank you very much. And of course, we, <laughs> and of course we are also very grateful for the generous and unconditional research gift from Facebook with which this idea could finally take flight and we hope that their initial support and enthusiasm will motivate other partners to join in. But now why ethics in AI? I mean there has, we have talked about it already but why is it so important? We are about to enter a new decade. The new 20s are coming. Will they be a decade of stagnation or of breakthroughs? And how will different regions of the globe fare? The answers to these questions will depend in some part on technology, but it will not depend only on technology. It will depend on how and whether we use it. It will depend on us. And we have seen similar situations before. 50 years ago, by coincidence, uh, the first man walked on the moon. And the success of this mission was not purely a question of technology. It was a question of human decision, of determination, and a question of safety measures. In his famous speech, President Kennedy, at, in his time, called for landing a man on the moon and returning him safely back to the Earth. And all kinds of safety measures were needed to ensure that the mission did not become a failure. In some sense, maybe our goal here is narrower when it comes to AI. But in some sense, it is also much wider. We don't just want to put a few people on the moon. AI will be used by millions, by billions of people around the world. And as the reach of AI grows, so do the stakes. Therefore, we will need standards and guidelines. It is similar to climbing. The higher the mountains, the higher the level of safety needed for climbing will have to be. So it is my firm conviction that AI needs ethical guidelines, and that doesn't necessarily mean legal guidelines only, ethical guidelines in order to gain acceptance. Without buy-in from users, AI will not fly. Citizens will not accept the systems if they do not trust them, and which means that people involved in AI must take ethics seriously. This does not just mean paying lip service to some highly abstract principles. We have these principles and it is good that we have them. Uh, rather, but now it means integrating ethical guidelines and practices into the day-to-day -day steps used to improve systems, programs or robots. It means thinking about the ethics of AI from the beginning and throughout the AI development. And this might also mean that, a that ethics, on the other hand, has to learn too. It has to learn that, contrary to what some may believe, that ethics can actually be programmed into a system. Ethics is not something that is beyond anything digital, beyond programs. And second, it also means that AI can be made trustworthy, indeed. Trust can be the feature of a system, not just a personal characteristic. So the necessity to engage with ethics in the development of AI is clear. The next question is how to prioritize our efforts in a field that is rapidly growing. In general, when talking about AI ethics, we should distinguish between two kinds of questions. One, 
is those that realistically might become a problem, maybe in 30 or 40 years, if at all. So that's too much of the current debate, I would say, still ranges on grand questions like artificial general intelligence, robot rights, or the Terminator, of course. And, but second, we have other kinds of questions that already now and during the coming three to five years maybe uh, do and will pose problems for companies and others working in AI. And among these are questions of liability, of fairness uh, and bias, and of course security. Harvard AI professor Barbara Gross summed it up like this a few years ago when she said, stop thinking about robots taking over, we have more to fear from dumb systems that people think are smart than from intelligent systems that know their limits. I think this is right. So uh, this is our approach. Uh, we, our approach is an interdisciplinary one, as had already has been mentioned by our, our president. We have installed the first research groups uh, with actually the involvement of nine different departments, centers, or schools, from ranging from the informatics and engineering field uh, mathematics, education, governance, management, and medicine. And our, the, the research topics, as you will find them on our, on our new website, uh, they cover social media and online behavior, autonomous driving, medical decision making, uh, trust and accountability in machine learning, workforce optimization, and human-machine interaction. And um, let me just very briefly mention a few of these. So one uh, by, uh, is a cooperation between colleagues, uh, uh, colleagues Fortner and Bütte from the School of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering Governance, uh, asked the question, how can we use AI-based data analysis to improve workplace efficiency without weakening employee autonomy? Another one, a cooperation between uh, Mechanical Engineering and School of Governance, how can we ensure the implementation the implementation, not just the, the standards, uh, the implementation of ethical behavior into autonomous technologies like cars. Uh, another one between the School of Medicine, uh, colleague Bux and colleague Diepold from the Electrical Engineering asks, how can AI support physicians in solving ethical dilemmas uh, arising during patient care? What drives social media group level phenomena and how can we uh, detect, react to and mitigate the related negative dynamics? Uh, a collaboration between colleague Pfeffer from the School of Governance and colleague Fournazier from the Department of Mathematics. Uh, how can we use personalized AI-based interventions to target perpetrators of undesirable and online behaviors and what are the prerequisites to that? This is a cooperation between the Department of Education uh, by uh, colleague Baumert and colleague Großklacks from the School of Informatics. And finally, how can we manage trust and distrust in AI-based machine learning applications where the inner workings are unclear and murky even for experts? Again, a bit, uh, colleague uh, from the School of uh, Electrical Engineering and from the MCTS uh, Passat. And, uh, just to give you some uh, very brief uh, 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 perspective, what will, uh, you can expect from us next year. So um, we have already scheduled uh, a big international congress for next November, the Responsible AI Forum, which will be uh, held here in Munich. Um, and uh, there, is a, there is a website already online and we will have uh, more concrete announcements soon. And, uh, I would just like to mention that our new institute uh, will be located in Garching in the new Galileo building, which also has just been finished in time. So we are working in entirely new uh, announcements. And uh, I would just like to say at the end of my lecture that of course this has not been possible, would not have been possible without my team uh, who are all sitting here in the audience. And I would like to be, give a big thank you to them finally uh, otherwise we would not be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.